All right, everyone, how are you doing? Welcome along back to a brand new video. And today we're gonna to be talking about five of the rarest animals in the world. Now, some people might call these anomalies. Before we get into that though, I just wanna say a big thank you to everyone for the support on the channel recently. It's been a bit of a madness, but let's make sure to keep it going. So smash a like on this video. If you're new around here, don't forget to subscribe. And also if you fancy it, why not consider becoming a patron as well? But now let's get stuck into five of the rarest animals alive today. So to start my list off today, coming in at number five is going to be the Kakapo. The Kakapo is a flightless parrot that resides in New Zealand. Might I add, this is the world's only flightless parrot. Not only is it the world's only flightless parrot, it's also the world's heaviest parrot as well. How cool is that? It also gets the nickname of the owl parrot because of like the dish shaped face it has as well. Weirdly enough though, it's actually pretty good at climbing. So who needs wings anyway? There's also this great video on YouTube of this Kakapo doing the nasty on someone from the BBC's head. Now Kakapo are cute little things and they can live for quite a long time. Estimates of their lifespan can be anywhere up to 100 years, which is absolutely mental. Now, Kakapo, they will go and feed on things like seeds, fruits, and like native plants. The Kakapo is rated as being critically endangered like every single other animal on this list. But at one point or another in its lifespan, it was considered to be extinct. That was until the 1970s, where a few were found on Stewart Island, which is just south of the South Island of New Zealand. By 1977, the Kakapo population had plummeted down to 18 individuals left. So conservation programs were put in place to help save this fat, flightless, owl-looking parrot. And in positive news, now in 2022, there are about 200 Kakapo in the wild. So that's gone up. That's gone up quite a lot. All the Kakapo that are alive today are on islands around the coast of New Zealand. They are not on the mainland anymore. So you could say they're extinct from the mainland. All of these islands are predator-free and it would only take one predator to get on there to maybe really do some damage to the population. But so far, so good. The recovery is going well and there are a lot more Kakapo in the world today than there were 50 years ago. But still, it's a very, very, very rare animal. Long live the fat flightless owl parrot, I say. <laughs> Moving on to number four now, and it's going to be the Amur Leopard. Amur Leopards, like most cats, are just, I mean, they're stunning to look at. These fellas, though, they can live up to about 15 years, but are at serious risk of extinction. Now, the Amur Leopard is from a gigantic region that used to span China, Korea, and the southern part and eastern part of Russia. Today, though, unfortunately, its range is just a fragment of what it used to be and uh, there's no prizes for guessing why humans humans hunting them for their fur like still today in this age 2022 people are still hunting them for their fur but not only are they being hunted for their fur they're also having to experience habitat loss and deforestation and it's really 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 constricted where they used to roam the ammo leopard is so few numbered that estimates back in 2007 of the wild population was just 20. But through conservation, that wild number now is looking more healthy at about 100. Now, unlike most animals on this list, there are actually ammo leopards in captivity. And I think that number totals around 200, give or take. Conservation for these animals in captivity is in place and they're trying to breed these animals to release them back into the wild. But the biggest problem that the ammo leopard has and the biggest risk to its future isn't the hunting, it isn't the habitat loss, it's actually interbreeding. The genetic diversity that ammo leopards have is very, very low. Now, while it might look good that the population is increasing, if this is all through interbreeding and the genetic diversity is too low, it will come to a point where that population just it just dives off a cliff because they just can't reproduce. And there are some numbers to back this up and show that it could be a massive problem. Since the 1970s, they've monitored cub survival. And I'm gonna give you a few dates here to show you the decline. In 1973, on average, 1.9 cubs survived until adulthood under one female. In 1984, that number had decreased to 1.7 cubs per female. And in 1991, one cub was being raised and survived by an ammo leopard female. The future of the ammo leopard is looking quite bleak, but hopefully with conservation efforts, things can be turned around for it. We're gonna move it on to number three now anyway, and this is where we get into the really rare stuff. I mean, like this stuff now is mega rare. This stuff that I'm gonna talk about, this could be extinct this decade. A bad year for these next few animals, and they could be gone. 
in the year. So with that said, coming in at number three is going to be the Red Wolf. I love a wolf, so this one is quite sad for me. And I'm going to hit you with a sad number first. There are only eight of these alive in the wild today. Eight. This is due to being shot, mostly. I mean, it's America, what did you expect? But really, the red wolf, it does look quite similar to the coyote, and it's very easy to understand, I think, anyway, how you could get these two mixed up and accidentally shoot a red wolf. But still, they've been massively let down as a species. Their range right now is very small. You can only find them in certain parts of North Carolina, whereas their range used to be pretty much all of the south and eastern side of the United States. And the population was quite widespread up until the 1960s, and then they were decimated. Habitat loss and strong predator control programs pretty much wiped them out. So much so that in 1980, they were declared extinct in the wild. So that brings me on to the captivity side of this, because there are about... 200 red wolves in captivity today. Most of these animals are in breeding programs to try and keep this species alive. In 1987, it was said that enough animals were bred in captivity that they could start trying to reintroduce them into the world, so they gave it a go. And initially, it was quite successful. By the time 2006 came about, the population had reached its peak of about 130 red wolves in the wild. But since then, illegal killings and authorised coyote hunts has really made this population plummet. Up until the point now in the wild red wolves stand at eight again and face extinction in the wild once more all that hard work to revive the population just gunned down we will literally never learn but we're going to move on to number two now and for this one we're going to talk about the sowler or its other name the asian unicorn because of how rare this thing is again this is another animal on this list that hasn't got anything in captivity although it has been in captivity before but it doesn't do well and it tends to die within a couple of weeks the sowler is stupidly rare like it is ultra rare think of the biggest words you can to describe rare, it is that. And you can definitely understand why it gets the name, the Asian unicorn. It was first reported of in 1992 as a living species. It went all that time and it got to 1992 when we thought, what, what, that's a bit new, what's that? It was then photographed in 1993 in captivity for the first time. And the last time it was photographed was in 2013 by a camera trap. So as of recording this, that is nine years ago, it was last photographed. That is mental. The Asian unicorn's range is thought to be through Vietnam and Laos and specifically in the Annamite range. And it's a bit of a weird one because it sort of looks like it should be a deer, but it's classed as a bovine, which is a cow. But because of its rarity and the local folklore that goes with it now, it's got a bit of a price on its head. In basic terms, the locals in the area love hunting. They love it, that's their favorite thing to do. And they see the Sowler as like the crown jewel, the gold medal, and it's flipping amazing if you get one of them. Whereas to people like me and you guys watching this right now, it's like, can you please stop killing the really rare animals? Now estimates of the Sowler population or the Asian unicorn in the wild is thought to be less than 200, even though they haven't been spotted by a camera, since 2013. And again, they've got zero in captivity, so it's really not looking good for them. And as far as the conservation goes for this animal, because it's so rare and it's so rarely seen, not a lot of money is put in trying to actually find it and help it. It's deemed not a priority which sort of seems a bit backwards to me. But who am I to judge? Anyway, we have now arrived at number one on this list. This could be the rarest animal alive today. And here we have the vaquita. The vaquita is a porpoise you can find in the Gulf of California, specifically the Sea of Cortez. It's the smallest cetacean alive today, and I mean it's small. It's about a meter and a half in length. I, I am bigger. I am bigger than the vaquita. And this animal was only really described for the first time fully in the late 1980s, so there's no real information on their historical range. A survey was carried out in 1997, and it was reported back that only about 567 of these animals remained alive in the wild. There are none of these animals in captivity, although there has been attempts to try and push them into captivity, into like sea enclosures, like big enclosures for these guys to roam around in, and they'll be fine. Uh, this, was, this was attempted twice. One of these animals died, and then they had to go and release the other one. Basically, like the Sowler, they can't live in captivity. They just get shocked and 
die. In 2007 though, the population of the Vaquita was surveyed again, and it returned back this time, 150 individuals. 2018 only saw 18 of them around. And now in 2022, it's estimated that there could be less than 10 Vaquita alive today anywhere on the planet. Again, no prizes for guessing how they've been decimated because, drum roll, no, no drum roll, humans. It's always bloody humans, isn't it? We've had legal and illegal fisheries catch the Vaquita via bycatch, basically big nets coming along. They just hoover up everything. A Vaquita's in there. Ah, oh, well, it's dead now. And the Mexican government just doesn't really do anything about it. In fact, in 2021, the government took out a no tolerance zone from the Gulf of California, which is literally where the Vaquita live. They took it out so people could go fish. And going forward, it's looking pretty hopeless for the Vaquita. Like this decade could be it. That's it, gone. This year could be it, gone. There's just, I don't know, it's not looking very good, is it? And to top it all off, in February of last year, the government put forward another plan to sort of take away the protections of the Vaquita, saying there's not enough around now and that's it basically they've basically just accepted they're gone see you later